Let's not forget J.P. Morgan Chase. Yes, that J.P. Morgan Chase. They're calling for record high gold next year, but this video's not about that. What about Bank of America? They also have a very optimistic outlook for the price of silver and the price of gold, but this video's not about that either. However, I will be opening this mystery box at the end of the video. It came from one of our viewers. We'll get to that in a little bit. First, I've got some good news for you if I don't throw my back out about silver and gold. This comes from our friends at Wells Fargo, and it comes via our good friend Niels over at Kitco News. I printed out the whole article for you, but I want to tell you what I think is key to what Wells Fargo is saying about the gold price. And when they talk about the gold price, just my opinion, they're also talking about the silver price. They're also talking about the platinum price as well. After I read articles like this, it makes me even more sure that within the next year, we're going to see $2,600 gold. Yes, you heard that correct. Can you imagine the day? I know it's just being measured in unicorn fart dust paper currency, but nonetheless, it will be a good day when we have $2,600 gold. But how does $40 silver sound to you as well? Because that's where I foresee silver going at a minimum when we get that $2,600 gold. But let's get into this article. It says a rise in U.S. money supply will drive gold and silver prices to new highs, Wells Fargo's John Leforge says. It says, despite recent volatility, the gold market continues to hold firm support at around 1950 per ounce. However, despite the precious metal's resilient strength, one analyst says something more is needed to drive the precious metal to record high. Yeah, we've been kind of levitating here for a while, right, guys? We know that. But let's also not lose sight that the current gold and silver prices, while we've been beaten up, they're not that bad. Silver and gold and platinum have hung in there for the last year and a half while they've been hit by body blow after body blow. Mr. LaForge added that with the Federal Reserve nearing the end of its tightening cycle, both gold and silver could be on the cusp of a long-term bull market, a new day. We talk about that. I'm telling you, do you see it? Do you feel it? People are waking up. Things are changing in the precious metals community. As part of a larger commodity super cycle, he said that it's only a matter of time before the U.S. central bank starts pumping money back into financial markets to keep the economy from slipping into a recession. Yeah, Mother Nature always wins. The Fed, the government with deficit spending, however you want to look at it, eventually, guys, they're going to have to print more money. It's a mathematical certainty. And we are in a new era for the value, not just the price, but the value of silver and gold as well. Here's a quote from Mr. LaForge. He says, if we do get this jump back up in money supply, and again, and investors start to worry that we are printing too many of these little pieces of paper. That's right, these little pieces of paper. And don't forget, we're going to see the mystery box here in just a few minutes. We will finally see that long-term long -term run in gold and silver. We'll finally see that long-term run in gold and silver. I would expect that the rally will last for three years. Maybe longer, Mr. LaForge, but hey, a three-year rally? That sounds like music to our ears, but not just because we want it to rally. We want it to rally, but because we know the value of silver and gold should be much higher. LaForge added that it wouldn't take a significant rise. This is interesting. It's not going to take a significant rise in the money supply nor a major shift in U.S. monetary policy to support gold prices at record highs. He added that the market is already sensitive, one of my favorite words, sensitive, to the government's massive deficit spending. 
The system is sensitive, guys. They have convoluted the quote-unquote system. And when I talk about that, I mean the government, the treasury, the Federal Reserve, the monetary system, the fiscal system. However, all lump it into one. It's all one big, huge mess. And it is very, very sensitive. Why do you think they react so quickly now whenever there's a little crisis, right? Remember the little banking crisis we had back in March? of this year. They reacted overnight, over the weekend, on a Sunday to paper over it. Everything's okay. That will continue and that will be supportive to the precious metals prices. These comments come as the U.S. deficit has surged by more than one trillion in the last two months since the government uh, resolved its debt crisis deal. Remember that thing in June, the debt crisis? Yeah, they, they didn't just raise the debt ceiling, they suspended it, right? They didn't just raise the credit limit on the government's credit card, they eliminated it. They gave them a whatever, American Express black card, whatever it is, right? Uh, the more politicians, this is a quote, talk about deficit spending, the more people will realize just how unsustainable this environment is, LaForge said. Where do you go when people start losing confidence in their currency and want to preserve their wealth and purchasing power? Do you have any ideas where people go where they start when they start to worry about their uh, their currency when they want to re uh, preserve their purchasing power? I think you know, right? I think you know. Another potential piece to the gold rally is further deterioration in the U.S. economy. He added that the Federal Reserve could be forced to expand its balance sheet as smaller regional banks continue to feel the pressure of a weakening economy, rising corporate bankruptcies, and tighter financial markets due to rising interest rates. We've talked about this ad nauseum. There's a freight train coming down the rails heading at the banking sector. It's called commercial real estate that's now worth 60 or 70 cents on the dollar. It's called their bond portfolios, which are worth 70 or 80 cents on the dollar. Don't think that when you walk into your local bank, you know that big placard they have up there that usually says, hey, we'll give you a 0.25% interest on your checking account. Don't expect them to replace that with a placard that says, hey, we just wanted to let you know, but we're having financial trouble. And since you're a valued customer, we wanted to keep you abreast. No, they're not going to let on to anything. When something happens, it will happen quickly. I'm not trying to scare you. I'm just pointing out a fact that no bank, no government, no central bank has ever forewarned their people of an oncoming crisis. Just, just bear that in mind. He says, the only thing that's really disappointing with gold and silver now, frankly, is that they're not breaking out to the upside. He said they don't look bad. They're just going sideways, waiting for a trigger. <laughs> well, we got plenty of triggers coming down the road. Guys, gold and silver have hung in there pretty well over the last two months or so. That with nothing going on, minimal trigger action. We know the triggers always come. Some type of financial crisis, banking crisis, geopolitical crisis. What happened just back in March, to touch on that one more time, when we had this little bitty banking crisis that Jerome Powell and Janet Yellen got together on a Sunday and solved mysteriously over the weekend? You know what happened during that situation? You couldn't find silver at your local coin shop. The bullion sellers online reported record by far sales. What do you think is going to happen next time? The future looks bright for the price of silver and gold. We're hearing it from J.P. Morgan Chase, of all people. We're hearing it from Bank of America. I don't know if we've heard it from Citibank yet, but I'm sure we will. But now... We just heard it from Wells Fargo, thanks to a great article from our friend Niels over at Kitco. Now, let's open this mystery box. Without further ado, I have no idea what's inside of it, so be prepared. Oh. <laughs> this comes from a subscriber to Ron's Basement who wishes to remain anonymous, and I will certainly respect that. It says, Super Chat. 
Paper, paper. Oh, something here. Oh, wow. Okay, this might take a second. Let me get out my fishing scissors. We're gonna cut into this carefully. Wow, this is really cool. Oh boy. Oh, wow. I don't know what, oh man. Oh, Betsy. Wow, look at this. A new bell. Man, this is beautiful. Check that out, guys. I know you want me to ring it, right? I ring the bell during live streams when we get to 100 thumbs up, but I'll ring this one once. <coughs> wow. That is really cool. Thank you to the subscriber. You know who you are that sent that to us. That is awesome. Let me make sure there's nothing else in here. I don't think there is. I'll check the box more later. Hey guys, as always, thanks for joining me in the basement. You are the most important part. If you want more Ron's Basement, go check out a live stream and I'll see you soon.